Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the iBug Buzz. This is iBug Buzz number 627, and this is for Monday, April 1st, on April Fool's Day. But this call is no fooling. I'm Maria, and I will be facilitating the conference tonight along with Sandhya. This is an open forum for anyone with questions or issues with their iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, or HomePod, and for anyone who is desiring to become more proficient in the use of the accessibility features of these iDevices. And in particular, of course, we focus on the use of the voiceover screen reader with these devices and with various accessories like keyboards and headphones and speakers, braille displays and, and many others. So welcome to everyone who's joined in tonight live and to those who will be listening back uh, to this conference via the recorded podcast playback. I'm going to... <clears throat> Turn it over now to Sandhya to make some announcements about just some of the many events that we have going on uh, this particular week because we have so many that we can't tell you here what's going on the whole month. But you will also hear about how you can stay connected with us so that you're always in the loop. So Sandhya, over to you. All right. Thank you, Maria. Yes, another very busy week. Let's get started. So we will have uh, at the midpoint of our call, we'll have the uh, big reveal for our movie. So definitely stick around for that. Test your knowledge of trivia and maybe you'll win one of those fabulous prizes behind door number three, probably. All right, then after the call is over, we have something new called the After Buzz. All the facilitators go away and then we just you guys can talk amongst yourselves and the recording is stopped and it's a design for y'all to get to know each other and just spend time and so forth without uh, facilitators getting in the way so definitely well if you all can probably recite the forbidden topics I'll repeat that later when we start that segment then Tuesday from, oh, sorry, all times are central and everything is on the same Zoom platform, so that makes it easy. Tomorrow from 5 to 6, Mac Buzz. Any questions about your Mac, whether you have one or not and don't know what to do with the one you have, come there and we will help you resolve those issues. We're off on Wednesday. Thursday is I Bug Trekkie Talk started Deep Space Nine Season 1. So we just finished a few episodes. So stay tuned for that. I think we'll be watching. Well, we'll be talking about what episodes we'll be watching. Number Then Friday is I Bug Night at the Virtual Movies at 8 p.m. Social time at 7.15. We'll have name that tune, jokes, and just general hangout time. And then after the movie, we'll have a discussion and trivia. But wait, we're not done. Yes, you may say, well, it's Friday, we're over. No, we're working on Saturday, too. We have iBug Unplug Melodies and Memories, and that's always a popular one that we have. And we're going to have a little name that tune, trivia, and more hanging out and just talking about memories, hence the title, Melodies and Memories. Who would have thought? All right, so that's from 8 to 10 on Saturday. Then we have our tech shopping spree for $10. You have a chance to win $500. And this is all part of uh, our fundraising uh, campaign. And I feel like I'm doing a PBS commercial or something, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we are a nonprofit and we do appreciate your support. And uh, that drawing will be on May 25th our 13th anniversary. You don't need to be present to win and you can increase your chances by getting six tickets for $50. All that information is available on our website. Finally, you may say, what is your website? Our website is ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G, T-O-D-A-Y dot O-R-G. All the stuff that I just said and much more is available there. 
And did I mention that all of our services are free? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. They are. So with that, I will hand it back to Maria. All right. Thank you, Sandhya. As always, so much good stuff going on. So we hope you will join us for some of those events. So now let us all go around and introduce ourselves and where we are from. And when you do introduce yourself, please let us know if you're a first time caller. So I am Maria in Albany, New York. I am Robert and I'm in Chandler, Arizona, formerly from upstate New York. <laughs> welcome, Robert. Hey, Austin. Hey, welcome to you both. Hello, and I'm Fran. Hello. <laughs> Fran in Austin, Texas. Welcome, Fran. Ned in Texas. Hey, Ned. Thank you. Ed, Ed in Georgetown, Ontario. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. Cheryl, Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, Cheryl. Welcome. I'm Paul in Columbus, Ohio. Hello. Welcome. Gary in Austin. Hey, hey, Gary. Welcome. Hey, Maria. Dan from Southern California. Hello. Anyone else? Elizabeth from Newfoundland, Canada. Welcome, Elizabeth. Yeah, Kenny from, from Springfield, Missouri. All right, welcome to you both. Marie, <laughs> a.k.a. Dwight from Reno. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Miss Fort Worth. Hello. This is Herbie in Houston. Welcome, Herbie. I'm Helene in Arizona currently. Hello, Two more Helene. Weeks. Currently in Arizona. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Jody in New Hampshire. Hey, Jody, welcome. All right, anyone else would like to say hello? Marsha from Daytona Beach. Hey, Marsha, welcome. Brian from Ontario. Hello, Brian, welcome. Somewhere in Ontario. <laughs> Just don't remember where. <laughs> Greg in Texas. Hey, Greg, welcome. Well, I remember in Chicago. Hello, welcome. Anyone else? Sandia in Houston. Hello, Sandia. <laughs> Hi, this is Greg. All right. Hello. Welcome. All right. Amina from Maryland. Hey, Amina. Welcome. All right. Anyone else would like to say hello? All right. Be beautiful. Very good. Well, welcome to you all. So, who was. <laughs> Who would like to get us started for the evening with our first question? And remember, this can be as well, or you can also make a comment if you have tried any new app or learned something new that you think would be helpful to share with the group. And um, this is Helene. Helene, go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, this, I don't, you'll tell me if it's not answerable. I have, uh, my phone had trauma and the microphone went dead so that they replaced the phone. And that's the good news. The bad news is you have to go to two different stores. And then when you get the phone and they back it up, not everything is, you know, great. And so my MX mini Logitech, um, external keyboard is not recognizable by the new phone. And I don't know if anyone is familiar with that MX Mini and the Logitech external keyboard to give me a hint because it keeps uh, saying things like, you know, get it close by, um, then, the, then the code expires because it says I didn't, uh, I, I had a sighted person putting in the code, but it just doesn't pair up even though it gets recognized for a brief minute. And when it goes to pair, it immediately says that it's, you know, it doesn't, it's not working, Be keep it nearby. And I thought maybe it's because I have an iPad that also has the MX Mini on it. So I went out of the house and went to a different home 
And was that the reason it still won't do it? All right. And you're getting, are you getting the message of like connection unsuccessful? Yes. I assume. Yes. Uh-huh. yes. All, mm-hmm. all right. Who would like to help Helene out if any of you are working with either that Logitech Bluetooth keyboard or any others, or even just in general, some hints about reconnecting Bluetooth devices? This is Kenny. This is... Go ahead, Kenny. Um, Helene, have, um, in your when you go to settings and Bluetooth, do you have um, the MX keyboard listed there as one of your devices? This is Helene. Yep, go ahead, Helene. This, uh, no, it is not listed until I press the one of the function keys for five seconds, and then it lists it, and then it says beginning to pair, and then it says unable to, you know, to unsuccessful. Okay, and you've okay. you've got the latest iOS update, and you've tried yes, of course, turning off the keyboard and the phone. Yes. Okay, and and then I got. Oh, oh, I, 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 oh, I didn't. I did not. Oh, I didn't shut off the phone. I shut okay. off the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn off the phone to try that. Try a total shutdown. And I, I assume when you went to the other place, wherever that was, you did not bring your iPad. Right, I did not. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's something weird about that one. Um, I've connected a a, a K three eighty, which is an old older keyboard, and it worked just fine with the new. Uh, 17 so that's a strange one all right this is paul go ahead paul did you did you by chance turn off the uh was your uh, ipad turned off at the time when you're trying to match them um i tried in in um when when i left the house i i didn't bother to turn it off because i was going 10 miles okay do i have do I have to shut it off even when I'm 10 miles away? No, I wouldn't think. All right. Anyone else? This is Ed. Go ahead, Ed. I see the MX Mini is the same keyboard that I use. Um, I would I would suggest like which are you uh, you're pushing one of the three buttons? Uh, yeah. Is the is the keyboard hooked up? Um, or was it hooked up with your old phone? I assume it was. Yes. Um, are you trying a different button on, than what it was programmed with? Yes, I tried F2 and then I tried F3 and both had that same reaction. Okay. If, if, that, if the keyboard, like when you go to Bluetooth and you go to devices, you uh, it'll show the devices that you have, but then if you swipe to the right, it'll say other devices. Yes. And, yes. And and it's not and when it's in other devices, at that point, are you holding the button down for five seconds on the keyboard? No. Okay. Um, try holding the button down for five seconds on the keyboard when you're in other devices. Um, because the window is very short. Yes. And then when it gives you the it gives you the four digit code, you have to immediately punch it in because it'll also go go bad. Um, it, and it and you might have to do it a few times. I know I I had a problem looking for my device, but I also know that when I was in the store and I opened my they opened my iPhone, and they went to Bluetooth, it was listing. Oh, like dozens of items in the store that will that was open and ready. I mean, it wanted to. There was a fridge there that <laughs> on my Bluetooth. So if okay. if that keyboard is putting out a signal, that iPhone will pick up that signal. Okay. Well, right. th- yes. Uh, this is Helene. Yes, go ahead, uh, Helene, and we'll. Uh, I, I I know I don't want to take up more time, but nope, um, gonna, yeah, some, go ahead. something you said about that, you know, uh, <clears throat> made me have a, a thing. And now I have a brain freeze because uh, it, it, oh, it wasn't a four digit code. It's like nine, nine digits. Nine oh. digits. It's a lot. Or seven digits. It's a lot. Not four. Oh, okay. It could be, it could be, could be seven digits. Yeah. 
All right. All right. Thank well, you. Any, anyway, I hope I, I've helped you. Thank a bit, you. You but... did. Thank yes, okay. well, good luck with that, Helene, and perhaps as well if there's some type of reset option as well on on the keyboard that may not hurt as well if this is uh, if these are two are your only devices. So I hope you can uh, get that working. I know for myself with Braille displays, the Bluetooth can be a little sometimes uh, connection hit or miss, especially following an update or a new phone. All right, very good. Who would like to ask our next question? All right. Again, anyone having any uh, issues, following any kind of updates in apps, or if you have tried a new app or discovered a new tip? This is Ned. Go ahead, Ned. Yes, when my phone updated recently to 7.4.1, it started reading my messages again. It started reading my text messages when they would come in. And how do I turn that off? I know this question has been asked before. Where do I go to check to see if that is turned off? And just to clarify, uh, this is uh, like in the notifications uh, sent or on your lock screen or in the notification center when they come in, they're being read to you? Yes, it would be the weather. The weather notifications are being read to me and my text messages are being read to me. Okay. And this is being read by like voiceover, correct? Not like Siri? Yes, it's being read by voiceover. Okay. And my phone is locked. I mean, my phone is just sitting there on the counter when it happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Who would like to help Ned out with this? Who has some suggestions on stopping those announcements? This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Yes, if you do a two-finger quadruple tap, that brings up the voiceover quick menu. If you go down to system, uh, it will probably say system on, uh, toggle it off. Or if it's off, toggle it on. I can't remember which one. But anyway, whatever it is, do the opposite. And then that should stop the announcement. All right. Very so uh, this is Ned. Yes, go ahead, Ned. So I go to voiceover and find that at the bottom, right? Yeah, well, basically, well, basically if you do a two-finger quadruple tap, that will bring up the quick voiceover uh, menu. To, to, this is uh, Ned. Access. But if I'm not successful with that, <laughs> so would I just go to gen my settings in general and find the the voiceover? No, well, you go to you go to settings and accessibility and voiceover. Okay, okay. Yeah. But right. but the two finger quadruple work, works really well. I just actually did that this afternoon. Okay, I'll try okay. it. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, sure. it's a it's a kind of quick settings menu, as Jody said. It, it essentially it duplicates some of the settings that are already there in the full settings, and it's just meant to be kind of a quicker way to get to some of the settings that Apple thinks you might be looking to change more frequently without you having to you know go into all of those the the voiceover settings. But yes, of course, you can find all of them in both both places. All right, very good. Hope that helps. Who would like to ask the next question? <clears throat> Robert, I'll ask a question. Sure, go ahead, Robert. Um, I don't know which thing I heard it on, but I, I think it was Mac and Talk. But they or some one of the so things. if sorry to stop you so if this does have to do with the Mac uh, that isn't handled on this particular call uh, is is your question concerning the iOS version of this app? Yes. Uh, it, okay. It, perfect. It, it, it it's concerning the, the I don't remember which show it was mentioned on. It's called V O Starter is the name of the app and. Yes. Uh, it's supposed to teach you how to use voiceover. And uh, I I find that on my, uh, it, it happens to be an older Air uh, 2 uh, 
iPad, but it's got uh, iOS 17 on it. It it gives the print in large print, so I can't get to see all of it. And it also gets me locked up that I have to get out and and reset it and try it again. So I have not had luck using that app to try to teach myself all of the gestures involved in voiceover. All right. Um, and I'm, uh, so you said you have not been able, I, I, I missed a word. <laughs> uh, yes. It, it, okay. it, it keeps, yeah. It, it, it keeps does, like crashing essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's not exactly crashing. I get confused to where I am and it, and it keeps going over the same thing again and I can't always get out. And, uh, the app doesn't seem to want to run by itself. It makes me turn on voiceover. When I have the app, it says voiceover has to be on, and then it seems to get caught in some sort of a a, a, a loop. All um, this right. Is, this is Helene. Used... Yes, go ahead, Helene. Um, I, uh, you know, I've been listening to that. Uh, Pete did one episode uh, one forty nine on the a cafe or a workshop. You know, one of those that, and it was one number one forty nine, and maybe listen to that. And then on your phone, um, thinking, Robert, rather than on the old iPad, because you're speaking to us now on a phone. So clearly you have, you know, some phone, to, you know, I don't know, but try to listen to it on a more up to date. Yeah. Oh, uh, just one moment. Her uh, go ahead, Helene. Fin no, I'm w finished. Oh, you were finished. Okay, great. All right. Go ahead, Herbie. So. Um, first of all, I mean, it would make sense that you would need voiceover to be on if it's the the VO starter because it's, you know, to train you with voiceover. Have you tried making sure that your voiceover is on before you launch the app? I've tried it both ways. Okay, and either way, you still get stuck in the same loop. All yes, right. I'll, I, I'll, I'll try to find, it's, it is an older iPad. It is a Air two, an Air 2, so I'll try to find a newer iPad and I'll try it on that. Now, do you have a newer device you can also try it on? Yeah. That... Go ahead, Robert. Yep. Okay, yeah. So you might also want to give that a try, too, because it could be the, um, you know, then see if it works better for you on that, because, yeah, it could be. Some apps just don't work for no applicable reason, and I have at least never found any workarounds when they just crash or whatever. But maybe try it on your newer device, too, like Helene said, and see if that also makes a difference. This is D. Okay, uh, go ahead, D. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe that app is not made to run on an iPad to begin with. Right. You may want to just try to do it on your phone. Put the app on your phone and learn it there and then try it on your iPad. Okay, I'll, some try, apps, I'll try both some of them. Apps, yeah, yep. excuse me. This is D. I was just going to say some of the apps are really just made for your phone, not the iPads. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Very good. Well, I hope some of that helps you out, Robert. And I don't know offhand, too, when that app was last updated. That could potentially be an issue as well if it hasn't been updated in a very long time. But um, I don't know offhand. That would be something to check right. in the app store. Um. Pete, I think, is who that was. Go ahead, Pete. Yes, I was, I'm sorry if you didn't hear me. Uh, yeah, as Helene said, Robert, we did a, a <clears throat> bug work, an Apple workshop on that. I did a, a recorded demonstration, and Helene said it was number 149. If you want to go to the iBug website, iBugToday.org, or if you have podcasts, then you can listen to the iBug Apple workshop number 149, and I did a demonstration of that app that might help okay. might not it is worth a try for sure all right very good and um, that's something you can find on our website easily if you uh you should be able to find if you go under the um, podcast section and um, find the various episodes and you can do a search for example maybe like on the word starter for example and, and that should hopefully take you right to it so very good. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Um, on our immediate situation here on this call, somehow I have turned on safe driving mode. 
and I can't figure out how to turn off. All right. Who would like to talk about turning off the driving mode? All right. Anyone who hasn't answered a question yet, has this happened to you? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. <laughs> so you have to get out of the call and then in the Zoom settings, go to... Um, it's not general it's a meeting and one of the options in there is safe driving mode and you can turn that off and then whenever you come into future meetings you'll no longer have to encounter that okay i d accidentally did it when I, everything was working fine and i touched something and it came on no it, so. it's th this is herbie go ahead herbie you didn't well, well you activated it by unintending to activate but it was already on that's what i'm saying if you actually you have to disable it um okay. and then completely because yeah otherwise whenever you move the phone it thinks that you're possibly driving and yeah that's the problem so okay um, you Thanks. want to disable it completely and that'll work all right very good so paul if you want to do that now you can you can step out and then hopefully turn that off and, and come back in and things will be much easier for you thank you all right very good who would like to ask the next question Hi, this is Linda. Can I um, ask? Hey, Linda. Uh, yes, if you'd like Hi. to ask a question, go ahead. Um, this is the first time that I've joined you. Um, oh, I, well, well, I'm sighted. Well, My brother well. is blind. Thank um. you. And so we are in the beginning processes of helping him. And I, I have an idea for that last caller that um, was uh, the voiceover question, voiceover app. Uh, yes, the, the VO starter. We found that to be really difficult to use. All right. And what we found worked, and I don't, I don't, I got, I don't know how, how, how I, if I can say other, can I say the name of another organization that I found some wonderful videos on? Uh, sure. For like, for learning the iPhone? The, for learning voiceover. Oh, sure. Uh, like a resource. Yeah, sure. You can share. Um, the group Hadley Helps out of Chicago. Ah, yes. Has a wonderful series on voiceover. There's a bunch of um, video series. Now, I was able to watch, but you can also listen, I would assume. Um, but that's how we finally figured out how to use voiceover. And we know we have a long way to go, but it was a really great start about using voiceover very and good with hadley you you have to sign in you have to you have to set up a little you know email address password because that's how they get their funding but um it was wonderful and it really helped us to get him going on voiceover that's all i had to say very good well thank you linda for sharing and um and and first of all no worries we we say watch all the time and see and such as well so definitely no worries <laughs> there <laughs> and um your brother uh you not sure if you heard this but uh definitely if you visit um our website ibugtoday.org uh, we have a jumpstart mentoring program for new users of voiceover so it sounds like your brother would be a great fit so. Oh, yay. I just found you guys on Facebook a couple of days ago, so we're so grateful. Thank oh, you. Very good. Well, lovely. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. All right. Who this would is Shri. like... Uh, Shri, was that you? Yeah. I, think, I was going to yes. say another good app Go is the screen reader um, that you can download, too. Okay. The app is called the screen, screen reader? reader. Yes, yeah, okay. screen reader. Screen reader. All right. Very good. All right. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. You know, if you go to YouTube and search, you can also find that uh, uh, that great instructional uh, is it I cafe or workshop 149 on how to use the voiceover starter app and it really isn't a hard app to use uh, if you follow the steps and just go step by step 
but the mentoring program here at iBug is really wonderful and you can get 12 lessons, uh, personal one-to-one -one and learn how to use uh, the voiceover features on your phone. It would be nice if your brother would actually join the call um, himself too, because you know that's, that's what we're here for. Yes, so the mentoring program, yes, it's a 12 up to 12 lessons up to 24 hours. So we really try and help uh, our mentees with getting up and running with the basics. So very good. I think he might have joined the call today as well. Excellent. No. He tried. We're, we're, we live in different homes and he was trying. Okay. All right, very good. Well, welcome. If, if you're able to, to join Linda's brother and feel free to uh, comment or, or ask a question if anything comes up. All right, very good. Who would like to ask the next question? And no, no silly questions. All questions are perfectly valid questions. If you have it, someone else undoubtedly has it. And we are all learning from each other and we are all could use some reminders of certain features because these phones are so feature packed that we may forget things that we don't use very often. This is Sandhya. Sandhya, go ahead. I, I'm asking a question for a friend. Uh, so uh, this person is trying to purchase things from iTunes and the app store and previously she did not have to hit the side button but now she's being prompted to do that and she doesn't feel comfortable doing that and she doesn't know why all of a sudden she's being required to do that when she didn't have to do that in the past all right does anyone have any help with that i don't think i have ever not had to do some kind of confirmation um are these sandy are these paid apps or are they free apps well i think she was using face id before and so that was right. always enough or uh but now she it's requiring her to double tap right so double I mean, yeah tap. i agree i mean because you can you can set up different ways you want to confirm if you allow um this is herbie yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One I... second. Go. Oh, go ahead. Were you finished? Sandy, oh, or? sorry. Yeah. If you allow, I mean, you can choose how you pay for things and so forth. So maybe right. that's the issue. All right. Go ahead, Herbie. Yeah, I was going to suggest that just go in there and turn everything off, and she must have turned them on. But yeah, if you, if she's used Face ID to confirm, then she would have always had to use the side button to confirm. Um, nothing new mm. there. So. Um, mm, cause they work together. It's like you double yeah. click the side button and then it also recognizes your face ID. Okay, this is Sandhya. Go ahead, so Sandhya. Just to confirm, you have to do both, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought, but I thank you for your help. Appreciate it. All right. Very good. Yes, Apple wants to make sure you're actually paying when you mean to pay. <sighs> um, although well, they will honor refund requests occasionally if you need them. All right, very good. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Rick. Can you hear me? Yes, Rick. Go ahead. I'm Linda's brother. Oh, welcome. I just figured out, yes. I just figured out how to get in because I couldn't turn voiceover on once I had my wife get me into the meeting. Well, very good. Glad to have you. And um, you can set up your voiceover if you go into your um, settings and accessibility and there's a triple click shortcut and you can set that up for uh, to uh, trigger voiceover, to turn voiceover on and off so that you would be able to then triple click your side button and toggle that. And of course, you can also, if your Siri is set up, you can hold uh, the side button for a couple of seconds for that to engage and then you can tell Siri to turn voiceover on as well. Excuse me, just a second. Uh, first of all, she told you I'm blind, right? Oh, yes, we're all blind. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm... No, no. <laughs> um, so, we've we've, all, we've all been getting... there. We've all been at the beginning of, of learning these okay, devices. When, so. <laughs> when you're talking side buttons, so like I say, I, I normally <gasps> had voiceover on before I got into the Zoom calls with the uh, other things that I've done, but this time I didn't have it on. And what you're telling me is how to turn it on once I'm into the Zoom call. Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, 
Uh, so what I'm saying is the way that you, so the side button is the one that's on. Um, so one of your uh, phones, the, one of the edges of your phone has uh, uh, the, the volume buttons. And then the other edge has like a longer button, a longer single button. And that longer single button is the side button. And I'm saying that no matter where, um, probably if, if you have it set up for that longer button on the right hand edge to uh, when you press it three times to turn voiceover on that would turn it on no matter where you are um, in a zoom call just literally wherever on the screen um, if you're using if you want to use Siri uh, you would probably need to be off of a zoom call because zoom is taking control of your audio right now um, but this is you're you're going to be such a great fit for for our mentoring program because this is literally like where we start from the beginning and like talk about the physical description of your phone and such and really start out with um, with some of these, you know, basics. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. I would encourage um, if she can help you out to to check that out. OK, um, so what you're telling me then is that I can still turn Siri on and off. I mean, not Siri, but uh, voiceover on or off with my voice. But I can also set up this button on the side to punch three times, which would also do the same thing. So yep. by exactly. activating the button, I'm not going to deactivate my voice control of it to, to start it up through Siri, am I? Ah, okay. So if you're already using voice control, I do believe that they should be able to work to. Together, if you already have the voice control set up with that side button, um, it should pr uh, ask you which option you want to turn on. Um, I am. Not, is anyone familiar on the call with using voiceover and voice control together? This Go ahead, Jody. Jody. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you if, if the language is right. I'm not sure if you're a you, you act. Uh, there's two ways you can use voice control. There's voice control settings. But then also using Siri as the voice control. And I'm, I think you're probably thinking of using Siri for your voice control. And what you want to do with Siri is to say Siri enable voiceover or S Siri disable voiceover. Uh, no, I, I don't no, think. No, I, no, well, that's the not, other, that's the other comment I was going to make is if you're yep, using. Go ahead, Jody. Yep. Depending on the phone you have, if you have a home button on your phone, you can also press the home button three times. Uh, if you have a home button on your phone, depends on what model phone you have. Yes, um, I have an iPhone six. I do have a home button. Um, okay, so I you want to press the home button. Siri. I wasn't you referring to using Siri to turn on VoiceOver. I know how to do that by voice uh, to turn VoiceOver on. Um, but uh, what I was getting at was if I use voiceover by telling it to turn on my voiceover am i going to negate that if i set up the button on the side so that the only way that i'll be able to do it is with the button on the side or the home button this is marty this is Jody. okay uh go ahead that's more deal let's have you go first um first of all voice control is i think a feature for people for sighted people who have difficulty using the phone with their hands so it it's allows you to give the phone commands with your with your voice. Um, the side button on your iPhone six is used to lock and unlock the phone. The, the like turning on and off the voice over or using Siri is done with that round button, the home button on your phone. All right, and Jody, go ahead. Now it's just I'm just going to say if you know unless you have a physical limitation where you can't press the, uh, the buttons on the screen or or swipe on the screen, I think that using voice control and using voiceover at the same time right now is going to be very confusing for you because you are a new phone user. I would suggest not using the voice control, the voice commands. I would suggest using voiceover to listen to your screen and use the gestures because using voice command is going to be very confusing at the same time. And, and again, and, using your yeah, home that, button to turn on your voiceover 
is is the way it's going to work on an iPhone six. Let's let's and, and just to, I just want to make a point, and then I think we can shift from this. Um, so I think Rick, you're asking if these two methods, if using Siri and then uh setting up in your case the home button to triple click that home button, are they mutually exclusive? And the answer is no. So if you set up that trip, if you go into settings, accessibility, voiceover, and you set up, and you're actually saying referring to iPhone six, I I don't know um how old of an iOS version that runs, so you may need to go into settings in general and accessibility, but um and then voice and then uh, the the shortcut. But once you set that up, then that just gives you another way. So you can either triple click that home button or um hold it down to trigger Siri, the voice assistant, and ask the Siri to turn on voiceover. So they're definitely not mutually exclusive. You don't lose anything. You you just gain. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. mean to be so confusing. That's no, no. It's all good. No, no worries. All right, As I you. said, we all start at the beginning, and I definitely think the mentoring program would be a, um, a great thing for you to look into. So very good. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. This is like, Richard. Uh, sorry? This is Richard. Richard, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Being new to the iPad and iPhone with Siri to the voice talk, such as Rick was talking about, Jody had mentioned it. Yes, I found it much easier to set it up, which I had helped to set it up where I had the screen reader and I had Siri. But... Being new to it, I could use one or the other because it just really got confusing. So I picked one. Now, this is my own experience and my own advice. I would pick one and go with that because, like Jody said, pick one because using both, asking Surrey to do this, and then just listening to what you're touching can get very confusing. So... Yes, it's very great to have them both set up, but when you're first learning, like myself, pick one, go with that until you get experienced, and then go with both or or even stick with one. It's really still your own preference, but my own experience, have them both set up, but pick one and get experienced first. This is Jody. Very good. All right, uh, Jody, and then we'll shift from this topic. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to clarify because there are three separate things here that we're talking about. Siri is the voice assistant, and you can ask Siri to do a variety of different things. Voice command is, or voice controls are uh, commands that you give the phone as separate from Siri. And then you have voiceover, which is the speech output that you use to understand what your phone is doing. Siri and voice commands are two completely different things. So you can use Siri with voice commands turned off voice control. and yep. vice versa. Okay. All right. So, yes, yeah, Siri and voiceover, that's fine. Yeah, voiceover and voice control can be a little difficult. Um, but, yes, yeah, Siri, Siri allows you to, like, say, to open a specific app or to ask the weather or... Um, you know, sometimes like send a message or some such. So definitely those two can work together. Um, go, uh, Ed, is it on this topic or a new question? I, I just wanted to comment on this, this subject because I tried using voice control and voice over together. But the, okay. only, the only way you could do that is by wearing headphones because okay. the voice over talking is saying things and the voice controller is listening for voice commands. So one um, interacts with the other and it gets totally messed up. All right. Like I say, unless you're using headsets. Sure. All right, very okay. good, very good. Okay. Thank you for okay. that. Hope that clears that up. Okay. All right, very good. Good discussion. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Marty. Marty, go ahead. I'd like to know if anyone has had experience with either the status audio headset or the Bang and Olufsen um, headsets. The status audio is a three driver headset and the Bang and Olufsen is a higher end uh, headset. All right. Anyone have any experience with any of these? 
All right. Well, Mort, you might uh, perhaps if you want to post in the Facebook group and see if anyone there knows or otherwise, hopefully if you try them out and have like a return policy, you can let us know how they work out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Yep. Who would like to ask the next question? Or make the next comment. Uh, so, did I hear someone say this is? All right. Anyone who hasn't asked a question yet, who may have one. This is Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, what what apps other than Voice Stream Reader? will handle EPUB uh, books, EPUB format, formatted books. All right. Anyone have any app recommendations? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Try the books app. All right. right built right into your phone. Yep. Um, there's some EPUB files that may or may not work with, but that's the one thing, one app I would try first. All right. Any other app suggestions? All right, then. Well, hopefully the books app will work out for you. And I believe, um, Herbie, do you know, I, I think it's just sharing, right? It's sharing the content and like opening it in books. I'm, I'm not sure how you uh, this get is Herbie, content so, into yes. it. Yeah, go ahead, Herbie, because I know, like, I've always, like, you know, books in the context of books that are in the actual bookstore. But I... Yep, you would just do the share file, share yeah. option on an EPUB file until it's open in books. In books. And... Okay. Yep. Perfect. And then it'll show up in your library in books. Yep. Very good. All right. This is Kenny. Go ahead, Kenny. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if y'all heard uh, that the the voice stream reader is going to go to a subscription model. Have you heard of that? Yes, I would. I would suggest um, for good amount of deet. There is a blog, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, there's a blog post on VoiceStreamApp.com and e the living blindfully podcast from jonathan mosen uh the episode i believe it comes out for everyone publicly on is it wednesday morning um something like that tuesday evening wednesday morning something around there and um he actually in this upcoming episode uh has an interview with one of the founders of the group, the Applause Group, which purchased a Voice Dream Reader in 2023 and were the ones who took this decision. And um, it's a pretty, I would say it's a pretty candid, is the word I would this describe, Marie. interview. Uh, Marie, go ahead. Yeah, uh, they, they've they been a subscription model ever since the new company took over. However, the controversy right now is the fact that those of us like myself who bought Voice Dream Reader when it was first brought out and paid $20 for it, which was supposed to be a lifetime license, they are going to make it mandatory as of 1st of May that we, if we, we have to con uh, go with the subscri subscription model if we want to get any further updates. And it's going to be $80 a year for most people. They, they discounted it for prior owners to $60 a year. But if you already paid for it, it's not, not very easy to swallow but a lot of people are pretty upset about it all right thank you for that summary and we certainly uh, you know at ibug we encourage everyone to evaluate their usage of apps this and is take, take the best decision um for for themselves as to what works for them um uh herbie go ahead so just i'm going to mention this it sounds like that voice stream is by no means the first app to do this where you purchase the app and then Later on, they decide to go to a subscription-based model. So um, just I would mention that this could really happen to any app that we purchase. And, yeah, you know, that, yeah. Yeah. So. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that context. Yeah. I mean, from a sustainability perspective with, you know, with these apps, um, you know, development time and such, um, I will say the actual, uh, the developer, the original developer of voice stream reader, um, Winston Chen, he himself had said that he had been thinking of moving to a subscription model prior to selling the company. Um, and yeah, as, as Herbie said, this isn't the first app um, to do this. And, and actually, Winston had, I believe, the Voice Stream Mac app, I believe, had been a subscription the entire time of its existence. And that's what I believe this is the same price that that was, but that includes um, both of these apps. And they did, um, Jonathan did ask on this interview. Um, Again, I would encourage you all to, to listen to it, to get um, all of the, the information that we have available at this time. And the, um, he had asked, was there a possibility that they would consider perhaps a tiered subscription for those who just wanted the iPhone app and, uh, you know, didn't have a Mac or for whatever reason didn't see themselves, um, you know, using that app. And they said that was something that they would consider if uh, enough people wrote to them and such. Um, there was a question there about a monthly option, um, which is, I believe, already available or upcoming um so i would yeah and they and they talk about some of their their upcoming features that they're working on and such so i would absolutely encourage you all to um listen to that when it comes out um to to get a full picture uh as of as of this point in time as to what's going on in, in their perspective this is jody very good all right go ahead jody yeah i was gonna say when you know i i have already switched back to Bookshare Reader. And at first, when that app first came out, it was very strict and very difficult to use and didn't use it. But now they've updated it and it's very nice. And if you just want to read Bookshare books, then it's a really nice app. And I, I recommend it. And of course, it's free. And then there's also the Dolphin e reader, which, uh, you know, is also uh, free if you want to listen to Bookshare books. If you want all the bells and whistles, then you might want to stay with voice screen reader but i've already switched back to book share reader all right very good and again i keep going back to this podcast uh that you all will i hope listen to because really he jonathan actually goes into a comparison of the formats <laughs> that these different apps support so i think it's uh, going to be a really a, hopefully a comprehensive um segment there to to help everyone in decision making but thank you for this that is, this and is I believe marty there's also this app called i believe there's an app called like speech central or some such that is out there as well can't speak to its capabilities um go ahead marty and then i think we yeah, will just share a, just a quick question on that is there is there just a yearly subscription or is there a lifetime um subscription option there is not a lifetime oh okay thanks yep yep What's the reference to the podcast again? Yes. So that podcast is called Living Blindfully. So those are two words, living, L-I-V-I-N-G, and then blindfully, B-L-I-N-D-F-U-L-L-Y. Think like mindfully, but it's blindfully. And um, the as I said, that episode, I don't recall its number now. It's not yet out. It's only out right now for the uh, plus subscribers, those who, who pay um, uh, the uh, a subscription fee to, speaking of subscriptions, um, to support the podcast. Um, but uh, the uh, as I said, it will be available um, to everyone. I want to say it's like either like Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. I, I forget what it works out to because he's in New Zealand and I forget if the Wednesday reference is New Zealand time or US time. But either Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning afternoon, it should be available. All right, let's keep going. Uh, yep. All right, who would like to ask our next question? And we have a few more minutes here until our halftime show of entertainment. Who would like to take us out to the halftime? Someone who hasn't asked a question yet? This is David. Go ahead, David. Yeah, has anyone brought up um, this game called Xanagrams? All on right, call, not, I... not on this call. So I don't uh, remember do ask your question. Well, I, I, I finally downloaded this weekend, and I played it, and uh, it's pretty cool. I, mean, I got through almost all the, one of the puzzle packs already. Of course, you can buy, you can buy additional ones for 99 cents. Uh, the app itself is free, and they have two like puzzle packs included. 
Um, so it's kind of like a cross between like a crossword puzzle meet, make, meets Scrabble meets, uh-huh. uh, I don't know if you know how to spell. <laughs> it's helpful if you're a good speller because it tells you, you know, the, the word is like 12 letters long or something. You have to figure out how many L's are in that word. You know, I think it's that word, but it's, is it 11 or, you know you have to count your fingers sometimes <laughs> i do but uh, letters but yeah i give you little piles um of, of broken down words like in little pairs like you know a s and t h and b e r it, it breaks down all the six word clues into little tiles <clears throat> this is and, pete uh-huh. yeah it, yeah, it's yep, pretty cool. david yeah uh, D- yeah go ahead finish and then we'll Oh, well, it was developed by a blind guy who, uh, he was recently blinded. He had an ex, well, he had a suicide attempt and it, um, made him lose his vision. So he, uh, taught himself how to code pretty quickly and developed wow. this game. Um, wow. Good for him. Only, I think it's only been out a couple of years, maybe, or I think he started Very. a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And you said it's called <clears throat> Danagrams, like anagrams, yeah. but with a Z at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, very good. Uh, Pete, go ahead. Do you have experience with Xanagrams? Uh, I've not experienced the app itself, but I did listen to the interview. Uh, Blind Abilities did an interview with a developer. Uh, Jeff did a wonderful interview, and he does have a unique story. He was a uh, he was a uh, special forces wow. soldier, and he went through all kinds of depression, and he. Uh, had an accident and then he really had a deep, deep, deep depression and he committed, attempted suicide and he shot himself in the head and was unsuccessful and he came back and uh, redoubled his efforts to um, get back into life and he he learned how to code all by himself and he started this and it got the Apple Viz uh, app of the year, I think, didn't it, um, David? Yeah, um, David. David you know? yes, yes, it did. It won the Golden yeah. Apple for game. Yeah, the Golden Apple. Apple uh, yeah, app of the year. So yeah, and I, I did listen to that podcast. Yeah. Really good. Awesome. <clears throat> so everyone can check. So that's Blind Abilities in your favorite podcast app, and that sounds like such a cool and inspiring story. And like yeah. that just makes that in itself just like makes me want to down. And also, like word games are good for the brain, you know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna like download this app now. I am too. Very cool. All right. What a lovely, like, uh, hard, but also in, in the end, like, very upbeat and inspiring Yeah, uplifting story. at the end. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, with, uh, well, we, we have actually, like, a couple more minutes. Does anyone have a very, before our halftime entertainment, does anyone have a very quick question or comment? Marie, go ahead. Oh. Marie, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, my microphone. Yes. I stepped away for just a few minutes. Could you tell me what the name of that app is? Xanagram. Is Xanagram. So Z-A-N-A-G-R-A-M-S. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, who else did I hear? I thought. This is Ed. Ed, go ahead. Just a really quick question. When I'm on my iPad, I'm on my keyboard, and I want to get out of an app, say I have mail open, and I don't want to close mail, I just want to go to a different app. Mm-hmm. What is the key? I mean, I know I can, I can, I can close yes. map, but I just want to go to a different thing. How do I yep. skip over? Yep. All right. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, you say you're using your keyboard, Ed? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, um, command key, which is essentially the alt key to the first one to the left and right of your space bar, plus the tab key. It's a toggle. Alt-tab. Like if you're familiar with a PC, it's very much the same. You toggle from yeah. alt tab, alt, which oh. is actually a command key for a Mac, but it's the same key. Okay, great. Thank you. Very good. Well, that is a lovely quick question to take us out into our halftime. So thank you all for a lovely first hour. I'm going to turn it now over to Sandhya and to the Mr. McCulloch for some 
wonderful fun as we all find out very soon what movie we're going to be watching on Friday. Sandia. All right. Thank you, Maria. Yes, very good. Uh, we'd like to say hello to people who joined in, didn't get to say hello the first time. Please say your name and where you're from, please. And if you're here for the first time, uh, let us know that as well. This is Dot from Southern California. This is Dot hey. from Southern California. Welcome, First Dot. time caller. First yeah, time caller. Right. <laughs> yeah, share it. April Welcome. Fool. April Fool. Uh -huh. Keep going. Who else? I heard Sharon. Pat from Ohio. Oh, hey, Pat. Welcome. Hi. Carol from Gloria. Houston. From Houston. Okay, Carol, Gloria, go ahead. Welcome. Deb from Kansas. Hey, Deb. Hey. Tom, this is Brooks in Oklahoma. Brooks, welcome. Thomas from Colorado. Hey, Thomas. Rick from Maple Grove, Minnesota. All right, Rick, welcome. Our newest caller. All right, this who is else? David from Houston. Hey, David. Sabrina from Baltimore. Uh, who's that, Rena? Sabrina from Sabrina, Baltimore. Sabrina, are you new? Yes. Oh, that means, you know what that means, don't you? We get to interrogate you. Ready? <laughs> How did you hear about iBug? Um, from my sister Vanessa. Oh, your sister Vanessa. Do we know Vanessa? Is your sister yeah. in Georgia? No. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. We love Vanessa. So wonderful. We're glad you're here. What kind of devices do you have? <laughs> um, I do have an iPhone. I do have um um. A, a MacBook that I'm learning to use. All we'll right. use Charlie. Well, we are so happy you're here, Sabrina. Welcome to you, and we hope you come back, okay? I shall this work. is Vincent in New Jersey. Welcome, Vincent. Thank you. Hello, hello. Who else we got? I don't this know if there. you guys heard me the first time. This is Cindy from Chicago. Hey, Cindy. Uh, welcome. Yeah. And who else? This is Derek, first time on iBuzz. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Derek, welcome. <laughs> Everybody's a comedian. Here we go. Who else? Who you are, where you're from. Okay, is that it? Well, we're happy that all of y'all are here. And uh, we are going to find out. We're going to be watching a movie, an audio described movie on Friday. 8 p.m. Central Time, Social Time at 7.15. Definitely come for that. We get to be silly, do some name that tune. If you're good at music, we like to guess songs and figure out what the connection is to the movie, if any. Emphasis on if any. Uh, but it's just a, a time to hang out. And then we have a discussion and trivia to follow the movie. So with those amorphous clues, we'll hand it over to the iBug guy. I bug guy, are you out there? Yes, yes, yes. I think I'm out here. Yes, you are. Can anybody hear you are me? Way out there. All right. Well, I got a late email this afternoon. I didn't get this chance to share it with Sandhya. It was from the audio description project warning us that some of the films we've been showing are in violation of some of the statutes regarding whatever they call that. But so they've asked us to stop our Friday night movies. So unfortunately, oh, no, it's a for, after April Fool's. <laughs> April Fool's. April Fool's. <laughs> you scared, scared the heck out of us, Michael. Ah, Almost got fooled there. 
Yeah. <laughs> Almost get fooled. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So <laughs> we do have a movie. Yes. Coming up this Friday. So we are going to find out what the movie is going to be. And you know how we do that. We do it with. Oh, I <laughs> this time he's really hurt. <laughs> you watch the film. Okay. All right, all right, all right. The thing he didn't smoke. The thing he doesn't Several smoke. Several great clues coming up. And I really do like that app you guys were talking about, Xanadu. It is. <laughs> All right. Worst movie ever. We will never show Xanadu. Well, it wasn't the worst, but <laughs> right up there. All right. We got five clues. You get one guess per clue. If you've been a winner in the last three weeks, you are not eligible, unfortunately. And everybody gets to unmute themselves. So everybody right now, unmute yourselves and say where you're from. No, just unmute uh. yourselves. We're going to get everybody involved this time. We've got, uh, something 50 plus people online looks like. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have some wow. new, new people guessing, please. <clears throat> and some of you may get banned, but we shall see. All right, here we go with clue number. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this week's film. <laughs> takes place in Montauk, New York. Montauk, New York. I like saying Montauk, New York. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. That's enough. All right. Mm. Any guesses? Really quiet. I mean. <laughs> that cricket might know. Well, we're gonna have to move on to clue number. <laughs> the film's title is based. Oh, wait, first. Are there any poets out there? Or any poets, poet, poet, or people that enjoy poems. Is it poems or poems? I can't remember. Anyway, I love poetry, but <laughs> oh, we got a poet out there. <laughs> All right, this is for you. Our film's title is based on a quote. From the poem, mm -hmm. Eloisa to Abelard, Abelard, Abelard by Alexander Pope. Pope. Good thing I don't have a microphone. <laughs> Pope. The film's title is based upon a quote from the poem, Eloisa to Abelard. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess we don't have any poet poem aficionados. Can I use aficionado with poem? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you want there. to? It's okay with me. <laughs> Not a football game. Go on. I We're fine. It's only used with food and drink. No? Yes? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. All right. What mm. is aficionado anyway? Not is that, you. Is that Latin <laughs> or Italian? 
or something in between. I don't know. <laughs> All right. No more footsies. Mm -hmm. We're going on to quote, no, clue. <laughs> clue number <laughs> three. <laughs> Is Shree here? Yep. He is. All I thought the he way was from the UK. Yeah, he's I thought here. he was in London. I know. I am he's here. Living. Are there? It's late. It's late it's in like, London. Like, what? Hey, oh, what? Wow. It's like oh, 1 a.m. there. Like 3 a.m. Where like were 2 they? 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. That's right. It's oh, oh, go on. Oh. <laughs> oh, glad you could join us. Three, yeah. two, <laughs> number three. Hello there, mate. The film explores themes of memories, love, and mm. the nature <laughs> of relationships. <laughs> relationships. This is Shree. Shree for clue number three. Is it Cabrini? Huh? Cabrini. Man, you, you have to speak louder from London. I can't. He doesn't want to wake everybody else up. I think it's rainy. <laughs> He's saying rainy. No, Cabrini. 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 Oh, Cabrini. oh, I see. He's going back to that previous clue about the poem. <laughs> He's so yeah. wrong. This is Ned. <laughs> Ned, yes. Is Ooh. it Dirty Dancing? Ooh, Dirty Dancing. Does that take place in Montauk, New York? Well, I know it takes place somewhere up there, maybe. Out Oh. Upstate New York. That's I'm on talk is on Long Island. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like a beach town, isn't it? Yeah. Mon Mon the very tip of Long Island. It's the very oh, tip. Did? It's the very oh, tip of Long Island. Oh, oh, okay. Who Marty? said that? Hey, come on, go on. All right, Marty. Oh, the brother, you're wrong. Whoever said that. Dead last Poet time. Society. Dead Poet Society. No, we've, already, we've already seen that. I think we've oh, seen yeah. that one. Good try, Marty. Anybody else? I thought I heard Brooks. Kathy. Oh, I did hear Brooks. That's right. Brooks, then Kathy. What dreams may come. What dreams may come. Is that a song? <laughs> what? Dreams may come. <laughs> Not oh, anymore. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> Keep <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know that song, so we are moving right along. Ooh, all right. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Kathy from Tucson. Tulsa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Close enough. Amityville Horror. Amityville Horror. Ooh. About Ooh. love and relationships. <laughs> yeah, some weird what? love. Yeah, I think everybody's I telling you so you're so wrong, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? We're going to move on to Clue Number. Number It's like he goes outside and around the house and comes back in. <laughs> yeah, something. <sighs> we hear by portions of the soundtrack. Which, let me start over. We hear by portions of the soundtrack, oh, which are musical scores played backwards. Ooh. Ooh. 
some of the songs are parts of the songs are played backwards. There's conspiracy theories about that. Uh, all yeah, right. That's a Shree. Oh, Shree's back in it to win it. Flash dance. Flash dance. I don't know about those songs. He's pulling straws now. But should I consult the judges? Flash dance. No consulting the judges. It is obvious that Shri is once again wrong. Oh my God! Oh my God! Uh, anybody else want to go for the clue number four? Sharon. Yeah, oh, there's Sharon. Sharon <laughs> from New York. <laughs> Is it eternal, <laughs> eternal sunshine of the spotless mind? Which I think I just mangled the title of. But is it that? <laughs> sunshine. That's too many words. We don't play song. I mean, movies that have many words. <laughs> that many words. I didn't know there was a limit. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Say that. This, one. This, this is not a real movie. Uh, He's just making it, it up. Any movie. <laughs> it is a movie with Jim Carrey. But yeah, I didn't catch that. <laughs> the title so tell me one more time I, eternal my... sunshine of the spotless mind i think that's what it is mm -hmm. oh. Oh. okay eternal it's this is jerry from vermont still too many words hang on, hang on. jerry yes you gotta hang on we're okay. doing my stick here oh, so. oh all right <laughs> don't interrupt his stick no hey, heavens, we don't want that all no. right so the movie for, and we're going to shorten that title a little bit, Sharon from <laughs> New York. We're going to now call it <clears throat> of the SM. <laughs> Makes it more <laughs> suspenseful. ES of the <clears throat> And <clears throat> we <will> just <clears throat> move right along and allow Sharon to bask in her <clears throat> Winnings, ding, 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 ding. Yes, hey, Sharon. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Wow. The Spotless wow. Mind, starring Jim Carrey yeah. and that other lady that played on what was that ship movie that saw? Kate Winslet. Yeah, that ship movie. Ship movie. Oh, Titanic. Titanic. Oh, movie. I love it. Mm. Mark movie Ruffalo, about a boat. Not, not Jim Carrey. Good, good. No, Jim Joy, Carrey. Way to go. Congratulations. Oh, thank Jim you. Sharon from, is that the first time you've gotten one? No, I think I got one once before. Oh, right. Was it within oh. three weeks? No. Congratulations. <laughs> for Long time ago. Miss Sharon from New York. And what do we want to do with Sharon? Oh, boy. <laughs> the Olympics. Okay, Johnny, what do we have for our winner tonight? Oh, Sharon, you are in for a real <laughs> treat this time. Not one, but, well, let's first start with one. Do you ever, do you ever miss listening to your answering machine and listening <laughs> to those sad messages that you know you never want to answer? <laughs> well, now you will have your very own retro Panasonic ESA a e s a e a s a isa phone so you will have your own ibug colored answering machine if you don't feel like dialing with your dealing with your iphone and uh all that 
fancy stuff in your uh, voicemail, you can go old school. It still has the tapes and all that good stuff. And in addition to that high tech, you are also going to have the ancient Amstrad, A-M-S-T-R-A-D, PPC 512 or 640, manufactured back in 1988. I'm sure it'll do great. So wow. <laughs> you are on the cutting edge, my dear. Nothing but the best for you. And if you want to know mm. why... Sharon got these beautiful antique gifts. Come on Friday and find out. All right, good job, Sharon. And now, Mr. McCulloch, would you like Thank to you. say goodbye? Is Jim Carrey in it or not? He say goodbye, is. Mr. McCulloch. Yes, Jim Carrey and okay. Kate uh, Winslet. What? Winslet. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Say goodnight, Mr. McCulloch. All right, so now, in case you missed it, the movie is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, ES of SM, as we like to call it, and that is from the year 2004. Come check it out on Friday. Now, we're going to go back to our, we have our I Bug Bite segment, and with that, we have Miss Maria. Want to say anything, or let's go get started? Uh, well, what I'll say is that uh, I hope this iBug bite addresses some recent questions. And with that teaser, take it away. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit longer than what we normally do, but it addresses several of the issues that have come up on this call. So there we go. Let's get started. We're going to take a look at sending an email with particular emphasis in being aware of where the cursor is placed in the different fields associated with composing an email. The to, the ccbcc is applicable, the from field if you need to change the email account from which you're sending, and then of course the subject field and the message body field. The general idea is that you'll fill in a field and you will touch below that field until you gain focus by using a combination of the exploring by touch and flicking to the next field, double tapping to make that editable, filling it in, and so on. In the to field, it's quite rare nowadays that you'll have to type in a full email address as you type. Results will populate below the field and that actually applies to either the CC and BCC field certainly as well. Those results are based not only on actual contacts that you've added but prior email addresses that you have sent to as well as emails that are in your messages. So if you do have to type in a full email address there is the return button in the lower right hand corner of the keyboard to complete that entry but again it's so rare nowadays i've found at least that i have to type in a full email address as soon as i type a partial i can usually pick the result that i want from down below and double tap it and carry on so let's see how this looks mail 84 unread emails. I guess I need to catch up on reading my emails. But we're going to double tap. Mail. Search. Search field. And the compose button in the mail app is in the lower right hand corner on the toolbar. Toolbar. Compose. But to text field is editing. Insertion point at start. And here we are nicely told that we are in the to field and the insertion point is at the start. So we're ready to just type in an email address. So for example, if I wanted to send a message to the iBug address, I'm just going to start typing in iBug and I 
you will see I will not have to t type nearly that whole address. So I'm just going to start. H U I at V B H U H G results. And text field is it? As you heard while I was typing on the keyboard, the period and the at sign are very conveniently in that bottom row of the keyboard. If you do need to type in the full email address, you don't have to switch over to the numbers layer for that. That's specific to a keyboard when an email address is recognized. So that's a nice little touch. So I just typed in iBug. New message. Two text field is editing iBug Kit results iBug today iBug today at gmail dot com button and I literally just moved my finger a little bit below that two field and as you heard there there was the result with the email address that I am looking for and it's a button so if I double tap it but if we touch new message heading that new message heading is at the top and if we just move our uh finger down a little bit below new message to text field is editing i bug today i bug today and now as you can hear it filled that in it started to read that entire email address so you heard the today right i didn't type in the today so it did pull from the result now if i did want to send to another address i could just repeat this process you know type in another one or if i flick to the right if i do know it's someone that i have in my contacts i bug today add contact so flicking to the right there took me to that email address. So as you fill in addresses, they're going to show up um, as separate items that you can flick to outside of the actual to edit field. So if I hadn't typed in anything, we wouldn't have seen that the add contact button would have been right to the right of the to field. But since I've now put in an address, first we'll get to the address when we flick to the right and then to this add contact button. And I won't show that, but if we do add in a contact, if you double tap on that button, it's going to be your standard searching for a contact like you might find in the messages app or just any number of these contexts where you can add a contact to something that you're doing. So if we continue forward, we'll flick to the right. CC slash BCC from. And so this control is an expand control in a way at this point. Um, it doesn't doesn't say anything. But for example, if I flick to the right. Maria dot M subject. You'll see there the uh, from address and then the subject. So you can tell that these CC BCC fields are not expanded. But if we flick to the left back a couple of times and then double tap. CC slash BCC text field is editing character mode insertion point at start. Now we see that they have expanded if we want to do a CC. And similar to that do field, you're going to land on that field. As soon as you expand it and this insertion point is at start and if I flick to the right BCC text field that BCC field is as you can tell not editable at this point because the CC field is editable so if you did want to go into the BCC field you would double tap it insertion point at end and so voiceover doesn't confirm for you where you are out at if you are in doubt you can flick to the left cc bcc text field is editing character mode insertion point at start and then flick back to the right to receive that confirmation of where you are and those fields work in a similar way to the two fields so i won't demonstrate those again from and now we reach this from field. If you ever need to change which account you're sending from, you can double tap here. Select do it trip tr at and what happened here is that a list of accounts opened. I landed on the one that was selected and if I flicked to the right continuously, you just heard the beginnings of some of my other accounts and so I could just double tap on any of those to select it to change which account I was sending from. 
These are buttons, so if I double tap on the one that's selected, I'm going to keep it as the from account for this message. You don't receive any feedback from Two. voiceover. You don't receive feedback from voiceover, but I again, I just flicked to the left and to the right to get a sense of where I was, and I had landed back in the two fields. So this flicking to the left and to the right is a good way to be able to get a sense of where you are on the screen, and or you can also explore by touch, but voiceover in certain cases won't particularly announce where you've landed or, or where your uh, cursor is. So it's a good idea to kind of flick around a bit to get your bearings. So we're now going to return. If we keep flicking again, you'll C see B C from subject text field. Those C C B C C and from fields remain expanded since I clicked on that option. And so flicking to the right now, we land in the subject field. Insertion point at end. And again, it just says insertion point at end. We can safely assume that the field we were focusing on when we double tapped was the one that became editable, that being the subject field. But again, if you want to confirm. Maria dot subject text field is editing character mode insertion point at start. I flicked to the left and then back to the right in order to find out where I was. And if I just can't T type in S D S R T. Okay, so our subject is test Sub message con message subject test message content message body regards and I flicked it to the right there and below the subject is the body field what it's reading there is my signature and that of course that field is not editable because I've just touched it and or flicked to it depending on the situation but of course fields are not automatically editable when you just touch them so in order to make it editable we're going to double tap and here it's important to remember that you're placed at the top of your message body ready to type if in doubt insertion point at start it will confirm that for you when you Double tap it to make it editable. Again, if in doubt, flick to the left Subject, and then to the right. Message content, message body, text field is editing. Rico. And then it's going to read the signature because it's already there in this case and then tell me the cursor position. If I'm not sure if I'm at the start or end of the body, I can certainly double tap. Insertion point at end. To toggle it and I want it back up to the start. Insertion point at start camp H D and if I just L type in hello L I O and I'm still in the body here, so I'm just gonna continue to be in the body as I'm typing. Again, if in doubt message body text field is editing. I just touched in that upper half of the screen and landed on the body field. Two, two subject test and i just f really touched closer to the top of the screen and then went down again these fields are just they're still laid out on the screen in that uh linear fashion one right under the other but again if in doubt as to location touch message content me in that upper half of the screen and flick around a bit if you need to until you are told which field is editing and you heard their message content, that's your message body field. Once ready to send a message, 80 send button. The send button is in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And if I double tapped here, you would receive that send wishing sound, and my email would be sent. I'm not going to send this message that just says test and hello, but I hope that this helps you to have. A better sense of where your cursor is in the email composition process and how to find out where it is if you are uncertain. All right, so I'm happy. Thank you for sticking with that. As Sandia said, it's a bit longer, but I hope that it helps to answer, clear some doubts, and answer some points of confusion. I'm so happy to take any questions. This is Helene. Yep, go ahead, Helene. 
Um, what happens, uh, what am I doing wrong when I get to send and it says send dimmed? Ah, uh, that may be uh, the email address that there may not be a valid email address in um, any of the, f like, for example, in the to field or any of them. Hmm. And you have to, when you type, if you're typing in a full address and you haven't, you either need to select it from the results if it pops up or if there's no result, when you finish typing your email address, you want to press that return button that is in the bottom right corner of your screen to tell voiceover like, hey, I'm done with this email address typing. Treat this as an email address. All right. Any other questions? Maria, this, yes. is Jer this is Jerry from Vermont. Yes, go ahead, Jerry. <laughs> Wonderful presentation, by the way. Oh, um, uh, I was curious as to how you, what happens if you press and hold the send button when it's not dimmed? What I'm looking at is how do you send emails like scheduled emails to people? Is there some oh. button that I just haven't come up against that does that? Ah, so um, that actually might be a good topic for another bite segment. Um, but yes, um, I actually, it's been quite a while since I have done that. If anyone else um, has played with it more recently and would like to uh, answer that, go ahead. But otherwise, I think that will be a nice... Uh, topic for another bite i'll have to figure it out <laughs> all right well go ahead Shri. it's a long press we'll bring you those options long press on send on, on the send button yep oh okay thank so you so the long press the double tap and hold like you were saying or um a uh a, oh my goodness a triple <laughs> A triple, yep, tap a triple tap should do that as well. Um, and just back to um, Helene, to your question as well. I actually think, um, as I'm thinking about it now, I believe the send button in iOS may also be dimmed if you leave your subject field blank. So that could definitely be another uh, another scenario that you might be running into. This is Helene. Yep, go ahead. It, it's mostly it happens when I'm replying and I'll write reply all mm -hmm. and then I'll press send and then it'll say send dimmed. I hear the I hear the whoosh sound, but I just don't know if anyone got it. Oh, so if you hear the whoosh sound, then it did probably go through and you might just be hearing the dimmed because the message is uh, still on your screen for a few seconds, but it should be off of your, you know, screen. It's just taking a bit to update. If you do want to check, um, this depends a bit on your email client, uh, your your email uh, provider. But um, for example, if you and I, we did a bite before on moving out back into your email folders. We did it in the context of creating a new one, a new mailbox. But if you just go back out of your message list and you go into your folders um, and you uh, keep, you know, flicking, down, scrolling down, flicking down, there, uh, flicking to the right, there should be a uh, like a sent folder or a sent mail folder. And you can go in there and you should be able to see it in there to confirm that it did send. But if you are hearing that swooshing sound, that uh, should mean that it's gone through. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions? All right. All right. Very good. Well, then, Sandhya, I will turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you, Maria. Yes, very helpful demo. And uh, as always, all of our uh, recordings are available for review on YouTube, your favorite podcast, or our website. Okay, so now, who has not had an opportunity to ask a question and would like to do so? Please say your name, and we will go from there. Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Um, I can't remember how to turn off location on my photos. Ah. Okay, who would like to help Linda? Look. Location services on your photos. Anybody? No, no takers. Jerry from Vermont. 
Go ahead, Jerry. I think you'd have to, I don't know that it's separated from turning location off completely. You know, so if you turned off location services, uh, I think it would it would do it temporarily if that's what you want to do. Okay. It's Chris. Chris. I, Atlanta, I think if you go under settings, under privacy, then I think, um, I don't know if it's photos you can see underneath there, and then underneath photos you can turn on and off certain things, and one of those is location services, or it might be under settings privacy, and then maybe in the location services it might list all the apps that have asked, you requested um, to, to have access to your location services. It's, it's, it's one or the other. Right. And then you can turn it on and off for photos. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, who else? That's on how to turn. This is Jerry from Vermont. Go ahead. Um, I have been having trouble lately. Uh, and, uh, the this, this is not my question, but I've been having trouble lately sending Apple Cash quickly. Uh, and I found out that what it keeps telling me is I have to update my billing address. Well, when I went in to do that on, on my iPhone or iPad, there's all these different billing addresses that have that pop up from some of them places that I've lived, some of them from my work. Uh, and I, I really want to have just one billing and one shipping address at my present place. Do I have to go in and delete and remove those by hand? Or is there some way I can delete them all and just put in the one I want? All right, anybody updating your Apple business uh, mailing address? Apple Pay address. Any thoughts? Sorry. It's okay. Probably have to get rid of those manually, which you probably don't want to do, but yeah. Any thoughts? Okay, is no this, thought. Oh, go ahead, this, Cindy. Yeah. This is Cindy. Uh -huh. I. I want to help the other person with uh, the turn off the location. Okay. So you will you will go up three fingers up to uh, control center, and it's right there. So you could turn it on or turn it off. Okay. What what is there? The location, the choice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Now, anybody else back on this one for Jerry? Otherwise, we're moving on. Uh, oh, this is Maria. Go ahead. Just to confirm, yeah, I had a bunch of addresses too. I didn't even know where all them came, where all of them came from, and yeah, I had to remove them manually. But the good news is, since I did that, that was like a one-time thing that I did a few years ago, and I've never had to do it again since. Oh, that's all good. All right, there you go, <laughs> yeah. Jerry. Thank the you. Redeeming factor. Okay, yeah. next, who else has got a new question? Somebody who hasn't had a turn, preferably. This is Richard. Go ahead. I was going to say about the photos location. Okay. And the well, settings. Yes, there. It's all in there of other apps too. It's permissions, and there's all kinds of other apps. When you go in there, just go under permissions, find what app you want, go in there, and just turn off what you don't want, turn on what you want, but they're all in that same area of permission setting of that. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on. New topic. Who has a new question? This is Maria. Go ahead. I'm curious if anyone has gotten to play with the Access AI beta that is part of the Ira Explorer app. This is a free feature that similar to other services like Be My Eyes is Be My AI and certainly Bing has. Various programs have these image descriptions uh, generated by AI features. Uh, but what Ira is uh, attempting to do to set itself apart is to offer the human validation aspect since they have the agents as core part of their business to um, you know, provide real-time assistance through video. So this is having them validate the description um, or answer 
answer questions about it and so on. Again, not by calling them, but just interacting similar in it with a text-based environment of asking questions. And it's now in beta. So anyone can go in through the app. There's an access AI tab and you fill out a form um, and you apparently will gain access. I mean, everyone will gain access at some point, but at this point it's, it's uh, what's it called? It's taggered, I think. I forget the term, but it's like being rolled out slowly. Um, so curious if anyone has tried it. I do know Jonathan, again, back to Living Blindfully, did demo it on a recent episode that I haven't actually gotten to hear yet. So I'm curious. Right, anybody? This is Pete. Go ahead. I saw a demonstration on a different podcast, and it was actually very, very uh, impressive. The uh, individual asked it to give him a layout to describe the layout of his audio mixer. Uh -huh. And then he, he followed up with two or three additional layers of questions, one of which was, um, should I use the top three buttons of my mixer when using a microphone? It was a... Uh, condenser microphone and it was really impressive the uh the ai and this is not with the agent assistant this was purely the onboard ai and it told him well if you're using a guitar or something along those lines into your audio mixer it's a line in jack so you would use these three buttons in combination with that but not if you're using a condenser microphone so it was almost it was oh, wow. very intuitive so that wow. was a really good demonstration and i don't want to you know i don't want to say the name of the podcast because it sounds like i'm being we, we we think we can figure out which podcast it well, is. Well, I didn't do it, so it was really excellent, though. Blind Ability is a very short demonstration, like six minutes, but uh, it'll give you a great idea. All right. Cool. Okay. So this is Shree. Okay, go ahead. So I just want to follow up and ask Pete a question. Some of the articles that I've read, it said that the IRA AI is better than the BMI Ice AI. So from what you saw, do you think that was true? I, you know, I, I want to say it was. I've never seen anybody demonstrate uh, ChatGPT, uh, either 3.5 or 3.0 or 4, do it. But that doesn't. I, I can't. I don't think that it's using a Chat G, a GPT model or an AI model, other than ChatGPT, because I think ChatGPT 4 is you know, the uniform model that's used in almost every app that we would ever experience. I'm, I may be wrong. I think that's the base model out there. So I think it's probably based on that same ChatGPT4, and I may be wrong. So I, I, I don't know, but it was very impressive. Okay, thank you. All right, next, who's got a new question? Let's go. Who's got a new question problem or a solution maybe you figured something out and would like to share okay linda with a new question good go ahead linda i'm asking for my aunt she's 90 years old and she has forgotten her password to her apple account <laughs> how can she change it Okay, who would like to help Linda how to change a password, I, Apple ID password? Any thoughts? Well, the obvious, we could try calling Apple accessibility for her. <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. I don't know. It's been a while. This is Shree. Ed? There's definitely a settings on the phone to go in and reset it. I don't know where it is at the top of my head, but there is a setting you can manually go in and change it. Okay. Thank you, Shree. Um, All right. Good luck, but the, Linda. The this is oh, maria, maria. i don't know if you can because she's forgotten her existing one right like are we talking about the passcode to to be able to <laughs> no. unlock the phone or... yes oh and she doesn't have like a face id right that she can use until just to get in and then be able to change it 
She has the finger thing, but it's re restarted her iPad and oh, it said you have to type in the number. The passcode. Oh, wow. Um, wow. I don't know if like a recovery mode or some such would work. Um, yeah, you might have to reach out to, uh, I know they're really like strict about, you know, changing those types of things from like the privacy implications. I, I think if you call Apple support, they will, they will walk you through it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Robert. And just a reminder, we like everybody to say their name so we start getting to learn who you are. So thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're good. You're still new. We're glad yeah, you're yeah. here. Thank you yes, for that if you help. Get to, if you get your iPad locked, either by forgetting your passcode or it not being recognized, you can call Apple support. You may have to go to an Apple store uh, to, to reset it. I, 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 somebody in the family had that happen. And I know they got it reset. But they had to call app. They started by calling Apple support. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go. Who else? New question. Uh, this is Dan. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, with uh, reference to the last uh, question, yeah. If 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 the if the person goes down to an Apple store, they can set it to the default mode. And uh, you'll have to just set everything up. It'll be like like it was came out of the uh, like it came out of the factory originally, so okay. they can set it to the default mode. Return to factory settings. Okay. Right. Right. Oh dear. Well. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Who else? All right. I have. Okay. Anybody else? Question. All right, I have a Bard question. I'm listening to Bard, usually when I can't sleep. And the minute, like, anything, not, I'm not touching it, but, like, maybe the bed sheet or the bedspread, what, something touches it, and then it starts, you know, doing all kind of crazy things. But should it be doing that? I thought it only responded to, like, human contact, so... Uh, what should I do? Should I lock it or what? Who'd like to help? This is Pete. Pete? Well, it uh, you can just turn off speech. You can do your uh, three finger double tap. If it'll it'll still adjust the screen, but you won't hear it, which is what annoys me. But yes, any kind of contact will will make it react the screen is sensitive for for other than human contact that's not what i wanted to hear pete oh, i'm um, sorry well, let me go back and see if i got another answer yeah okay go come back later okay, okay. all right thank you yeah it's really because it does stop it and it starts doing stuff so it's not just making okay all right this is jody okay. go ahead jody you might just lock the screen yeah mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, two L. Uh, J Jerry from Vermont. Jerry. Uh, remember, if you do that, you have to set in settings so that uh, when you lock your screen, it doesn't turn off. Oh, uh, right. In, in okay. So Bard keeps playing. Yeah. Yeah, Bard will play on until your sleep timer goes off or whatever. If you do that. It won't. It won't be disturbed by little screen, you know, things like that. You know, I wouldn't throw it against the wall or anything. But I think, I think it will. It will last through a bed bread rub or a sheet rub or whatever have you. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is Helene. Helene, go ahead. Um, when my, you know, with my new phone experience here. I was in the Apple store and they said that for my information, my phone was a year and a half old and its battery was down to 84%. Um, so that was a secondary issue. And he, I asked how come the battery went down so low? And he said, whenever you're on a call, which like if I'm on the call tonight with everyone, he, he said, don't keep the phone charged like with a charging position and keep using it for the two hours because that burns a lot of battery. 
I don't I was, understand. I, I was I was very surprised, but it, it may be something new to me and to everyone else on the call may be saying, of course. I'm not sure what you mean. I don't, don't know. leave it plugged in while you're don't, on the call. Don't listen while you're plugged in on the call? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. This, this is Maria. Maria. Um, another tip that I've heard to optimize the battery life is to keep it charged between 20 and 80 percent for the for the most part. Obviously, if you're sometimes like in a situation where you need to top it off, that's fine like every once in a while. But ideally, you're not supposed to let it keep going between 100 and zero. The 80 and 20 seems to be like a sweet spot. All right, just for the record, this is Sonia. I used to plug my phone in when I went to work all the time, from morning till night. So, I don't know what I did, but it seemed to work fine. But just saying, I did that for many years. So, Okay. It's Marie. Know, neither here nor there. Go, Marie. Yeah, back to your problem with BARD. Uh, I think the default on the BARD setting now is to allow uh, it to continue to play with the screen locked. And that's the best thing to do is lock your screen. And then it's 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 not going to react unless you do something pretty, pretty strong with it. I mean, I don't think a sheet brushing across it would would cause it to react as screens locked okay. right. and it'll continue to play. All right. OK, thank you. That will be a big help. Okay, who else? New question, new problem. Anything new? Oh, Jody. Jody, Hi. go ahead. You can also you can also with the new settings in Bard, you can also um, go in and set up a Siri shortcut for uh, the sleep timer. And the start and the stop and navigating, so you don't even have to touch your phone. Okay. All right. Thank. You. All right. Who else? New question. New problem. Mute. Currently unmuted. Alt plus A. Like Mute. Go. Currently unmuted. Alt plus A button. Okay. Who else? Press Alt to show or hide meeting control. Full right. speech. Speech on demand. Yeah. I'm working on it. Um, yep. Yeah. I think I, okay. I'm just gonna yep. Yeah. Okay, so who else has a new question? We got a few more minutes left. Um, this is Marsha. Go ahead. Um, I've got seeing AI on the second um page of my iPhone. And I want it on the first page. How do I do that? Okay, let's hear this. Is a great question. Somebody who hasn't had a turn like to explain that? How to move an app from one screen page, uh, home screen to another? Anybody? All right. Okay. So uh, well, this, this is Jody. I, but, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, <laughs> Well, since I've answered a lot of questions, I don't know if you want me to do it or okay, not. Go on, go on. Yeah, go ahead, Jody. All right, okay. So you go to the app you want to move. Swipe down on the screen until it says edit. Do a one-finger double tap. Uh, well, on, on edit. And then you swipe down until it says drag. And then do a one-finger double tap on drag. Then go to where you want to put the app on page one. And you go to where you want to put it, and you swipe down, and it will say you, uh, you know, uh, drag the app and put it to before this place, after this place, or or form a folder with with whatever app is on there. So then you do a one finger double tap, and it will move it. You do a one finger double tap. Is that what you were talking really fast? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So you you first you, you start on the app that you want to move. Swipe down when it says edit, and then you do a one finger double tap there, and then you swipe down till it says drag, and uh, then or, or drag the app, and then you go to where you want to put it, and you swipe down until it says you know do you want to put the app here, do you want to put the app there, before before after or fold, and then do a one finger double tap and it will move it. 
All right. Very good, Jody. And remember, people, and you can record. always go back and listen to the podcast because, you know, uh, we have a limited amount of time here. So I know it's a lot to comprehend. And we do sometimes go quickly because of, for the interest of time. But definitely you can listen to the app, uh, to our recording and go slowly. You can slow it down uh, one step at a time. And I'm sure that would be a lot less frustrating in the long run. Okay, who else? Final question? Let's see. No, no more final questions. No question. more questions. That was the final question. Okay, Maria, thank you so much for helping tonight. Thank you, Sandian. Thank, thank you, everyone, you, for asking. Thank you. Great Very good questions. questions. Well All right, so we quick recap for this week, and then we'll do after bus. So tomorrow, Mac bus, 5 to 6. Thursday, iBug Tracky Talk from 8 to 9.30. Friday is I Bug Night at the Virtual Movies. We're going to be watching Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Then Saturday is I Bug Unplugged, Melodies and Memories. That'll be from 8 to 10. So we got lots of things to do this week. And always, as always, visit our website for further information. So we will stop the recording. Thank you very much. And have a good night.